Hi everybody. So this is um I don't know, I'm looking at a new kind of format for this particular uh video and that would be that we look at professional manga artists and try to learn from them. So here's a really good artist, uh Saiso, he's on Twitter. Or might be a she, I don't know. Um and they've got They've got a nice little comic up here, and it's been translated, and I found it on a scanlation site. So they have it here, so it's publicly available. So I've chosen I've chosen to to feature this one because it's publicly available on their Twitter. Uh, I'll put a link to the original, and it's been uh, translated. And then we'll actually go over. We'll we'll do kind of an in depth uh, analysis. I'm going to do an in depth analysis of the drawing techniques and. Maybe you can apply it. Simple as that. So let me just make sure that I got layer attenuation on. Yes, I do. Good. Okay. So one of the first things we're, uh, I'm looking at here in the first panel is that... Oops. Hang on. Let me make sure that my... I watch that. There we go. Okay. So I'm choosing it not because I'm trying to point out mistakes, but because I'm trying to point out techniques. And one of the most interesting things about the eye shape is it's a very atypical eye shape in that it looks like that. This is something that most people are not accustomed to, is that they would normally be accustomed to eye shapes being convex on top, convex on the bottom. Rarely do you ever get to see something which is concave at the top as well. So what exactly is going on here? So if I were to draw this out as a sphere, so we can find the spherical eyeball within this shape by just copy getting that and then following it around. We know the eyeball is a spherical shape, most of which is all embedded and hid within the skull. And now, once we have that shape by following that curvature, if we look at the eyelid, we can in fact see that the eyelid is conforming um, to the lower equator of the eye. That's what's responsible for that shape. So, let me get us a blank paste, piece of paper. So that means that whenever you're drawing eyeballs, if you want to draw an eyelid which is looking upwards, you can do something like this. And you can draw a little dot, and then I use that to figure out Pretty simple for drawing an eye looking up. You can see how the the basic, the, you know, the, it, this is a basic. This is where we take a sphere and we're drawing. We use the sphere of the eyeball and we use that to figure out where, you know, how is that eyelid placed and how to shape it. And the other thing is, I'm not even going to worry about drawing nice lines. I'm not even using a brush that uses pressure. It's it's a it's a mono length. It's a it's a sorry. A, um, the, the weight is does not change, it's a consistent weight. And then here on the, the same eyeball, like I you can see how I'm drawing that lower eyelid. Right? So again, we take a sphere and we can see how the eyelid could draw like that. Or like this. Or it becomes flat like that. Or it goes down like that or it goes finally down like that. And this works for heads that are looking upwards. So we draw the... Now, of course, this is the whole eyeball. You don't get to see the whole eyeball. Instead, a portion of the eyeball is revealed. Right? A portion of the eyeball is revealed. And then if we think of these as eye, as spheres within spheres, so if the head is treated as a sphere, you have, if we look at the, the eyeballs, we can see that perspective. And then on the head as well, there is right there was no 
right? It's spheres within spheres. No so that's why you get that particular shape. She's lowering her eyelids. And then on top of that, the brow, you've got this force being applied here on the eyebrow. And as a result of that force being applied in here, it's causing... Now, normally the eyelid would be shaped like this. But when you apply a force in there, it you know, it causes it to run into that. It creates that shape. That's what's happening. Then we can also look at um, the shape of the mouth, right? This, what's this, what's this shape going on here? So I don't want people just copying symbols that they see. I want them to understand the three-dimensional, um, what's going on in a three-dimensional manner. So what I see, and and of course, you know the artist. An artist is not going to see this mesh view that I'm going to draw. All right, like it, it happens in their head, but they don't draw this all out. All right, so I'm drawing it like a mask right now. So it's a mask mesh view. All right, you have that triangular shape there. And then. This is being carved back. And there's a bit of a shelf here. You can see there's a bit of a... Now, again, right? You don't draw the stuff out because it doesn't look good. Right? So I'm just trying to draw a polygonal mask as if this was a 3D... Right? We're just looking at the 3D mapping of this now. So the hole is carved out kind of like that. And it's kept very simple. Right, there's a lot of simplification going on. So, if we were to view this from the side, or let's view it from, let's look at this shape from different angles. All right, so this is from a slightly three-quarter perspective. And you can see, once again, there's that that cheeky stuff that goes right underneath the eyes. It's this, 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 the shelf. And, right. and I like to, I don't like to try and draw it all out as in one shape. I figure it's almost like a, like a bird's beak. And you can see how we're seeing the glancing side Right, this here, this is this is the glancing side that we're looking at. So we have to turn that shape over. Let me just make sure that my camera is properly uh, positioned. Nope, it's not it's improperly positioned. That's better. Sorry about that. All right, so I'm trying to take this this here. We're seeing flat. We're seeing this side flat on. This side on the on the left is being bent. All right, so if I was to draw some of the letter E on here, right, the letter E is going to be flat like that. If we draw the letter E re reversed, mirrored on this side, right, it turns away. So you got to look at the, the mapping, the letter R, right, these are all flat, flatly positioned against. So in this case, it would actually be kind of more like and the last one would be like really mashed, right? That's how we turn the side away. So don't just like, don't just look at anime and then try and, you know, mentally copy the shapes. You've got to know the 3D stuff. You've got to have it like really down pat. And um, you know, don't try to skip steps. That's what makes all these shapes that we're seeing. This little, this is this little area here. That's the shadow. Like it's it's a shadow 
cast by the nose and the lighting is coming from the right side going left. Now, we also look at the hair, right? So we can look at the hair and, right, there's this trend that's going on with the hair, right? The hair's all curving this way. There's definitely some kind of pole up there, right? So if you think of right, how to get good at drawing that kind of stuff, well, if you take a sphere, you have a pole on top of it, which means somewhere in there is a hidden pole down here. You might, any long-term subscriber <laughs> to my stuff knows this, knows where I'm getting going with this. Right, that there is an ellipse that forms like that. And then this forms like that. This one goes straight up and down. Right, this one is seeing a tilt like that. I can choose any point here and then go through the center. Boom, that's the other side, which means that this ellipse has to go up, has to go through the pole, has to go down, has to go through the other pole as well. And, and one thing I always see people screwing up, all right, don't screw them, <laughs> don't screw up, is right here, the tangent. Where your ellipse touches the side, do not neglect the tangent, right? It means that if you have a line like this, what I see people screwing up is they do that. Eh. Wrong. You've got to really, you know, really flatten that tangent out. And sometimes people squish it too far or not, or they don't do enough. So the practice for this is okay so we know if it's going or if we're gonna get the one that goes across it goes like this all right i'm not going to advocate for you to draw perfect nice lines you can break the lines as i have right you're looking for line accuracy not line quality that goes straight through this one here. Now, how do I figure out how this curve should go up to that one? Well, what I do know is that we got a tangent forming here. It's got to exit at that tangent. It has to pierce. And the other thing I can know is that if I go straight through, I know that it's going to, this is the flat part. It's going to have to go up. It's going to have to go through there. It's going to have to go through the flat part. There's another flat part. Right, I need to, and again, I need to not neglect my tangent. I need to go out from there. Got to pierce that point here. This is the this is the, the the minor axis of the ellipse. Right, you can do it in four parts or more. Just like it's better to have a circle or an ellipse, which is made up of multiple pieces and you can feel your way around and kind of feel like oh you know I need to add a little bit more to one side or you know, subtract from another side rather than trying to rush a circle which is all made as one nice line but it's a, the shape is shit get a better shape all right and even if that means having to glance right glance from one side glance from the other glance like that this is much much easier to control. It feels better to work with Hive as well. Right. So pick pick another spot, maybe here. So once again, we go through, we find out. So if we go like this, 90 degrees up, that's the minor axis. You've got to find the major and the minor axis. The major axis is easy. The minor axis is a little trickier. And go through. Make sure you keep track of where your poles are. So, let's see. My problem is I didn't go through that bottom pole. 
right, I'm gonna clearly indicate where my bottom pole is. So, there's my bottom pole, there's my top pole. Okay, so try from here. And then again. And again. And then, let's see. Here gets kind of tricky, right? So that has to go through. Yeah, it looks... Try and get that tangent. All right, it's much harder now because my hand is obscuring my work. But as long as you are cognizant of the hazard, right? Oh, that's the major axis. So it's better to have an exercise where your lines look crappy, but the shapes are correct than one in which your lines look nice, but the shapes are all wrong. Because the lines form the shapes, right? The, the, the lines must exist for the purpose of the shapes. You fuck the shape up? Well then, you know, you had one job. Get the shapes right. Oh, hang on a second. There we go. Alright. That's what it looks like when it's right. Alright, don't don't try to do it like this this is this is like just yeah. Yeah, don't don't try to do it this style. All right, because the shapes are all too hard to control. I don't advocate for this this style of, of learning to, to draw because it just it makes a lot of crappy shapes. All right, and so you know, being able to the whole point of being able to do this is so that you can draw. I know, I've gone quiet for a second because I'm actually concentrating. Okay, so you can see that definite pull up there. Like a north pole. You, know. you can see the pole. Now, another thing I should show you is this is another syndrome that people have. It's a common mistake or error. And that is that the ends of the hair always look like this. Okay? Don't do not do that. <laughs> it's a pet peeve. Alright? Look at how I've done, how I've treated things. I'm making it so that this... It's highlight lines. This line is in front. This line here is going behind. Why? Because... I've got hairs overlapping hairs. Right. This hair comes in front. This hair is behind. Right? Why do I do it that way? Well, pretty simple. Because on a sphere, right, if we take a sphere, this stuff is close. Right? The stuff that is off to the sides is further and overlapped and further and further away, right? And it also, we see a lot of, we see a lot of perspective distortion, right? But the stuff in the middle is the, is the stuff that's close up, right? So if I draw this as a, as a series of, let's say, discs, circular, you know, discs, right? This one goes in front of that one. So it's like shingles, I guess. Right, and then they kind of right, 
you've got to be able to. handle that overlap right hair the way that i handle the hair with the in manga is it, it's similar right it's it's a, it's like shingles like shingles on a roof right this one i can actually make that go in front this one i can make go it go behind or if i wanted to i could purposefully pull this one in front and put this one behind and this makes it this gives it a layered look it gives the piece a layered look. Now it feels like this piece up top is overlapping this other piece down here. And then the other thing is that I have straight edges, right? This straight edge has been cut, right? That's been cut. The, the hair cutter cut that off. The, the barber, the hairstylist cut that off. And you can see that there is a distinct, a very definitive cut right here. Right? Those pieces have been shorn off. So that's what guides me to do something like this. So you want to do it? If you want to draw like manga and anime, you got to have the good basics. You got to have solid, solid. Like you're, you got to have the solid fundies because you can see how I'm using them over and over and over again, especially when it comes to drawing the hair, the hair, the eyes. All right. Now, in this case, what the artist has done is the artist did not particularly cut them off. And but the artist also chose not to continue the lines into the eye there. But this gives us the appearance of a cut off hair as does this one right we get we get the appearance of cut off i feel like uh as as a bit of an error this ear feels feels a little close feels awfully close to that eye um so could have chosen not to, could have chosen to omit the ear but when we look at this one it looks okay perspective play some funny tricks. I think it would have been better off uh, if um, he left the ear out. Oh well. It's a very cute comic. Very cute comic. So, also, you know, when you look at, at how... Um, Right, like we we once again return to the eyes. You see that, right? We've got that. This is a little bit more open, right? You get that. You can already sense how, um, you know, her face is relaxed in the next shot, and you know this th those eyes feel a lot more relaxed. Um, I think another key thing to look at is the amount of pupillary uh, exposure so in this case if, if I just mark out right if this thing was a full you know cat iris it's pretty much divided almost in half right we look at this we can see that you know a lot more of that that um, pupil is being shown now So depending on how much of that pupil you show, just getting a, a clear piece of paper. Okay. So if I draw, and this is the thing, right? People tend to get lost with like the really large, you know, anime shiny pupils, right? But don't get lost by that stuff. Look at just, we take something like this. Then this drops down right, to show concavity. I do this to show the concavity of the eye eyeball. Right. And the funny thing is, is this is like, to be able to do that, 
to, to do what I just did, that's 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 like the, the same pole drawing stuff, except I'm just drawing the here. Actually, no, I'll draw it. Let's uh, do that. Right, that's what we've got. It's just the other side of the sphere. So, once again, basics, basics, basics. You know, you need your your fundamentals. You totally need your fundamentals. There's just no, there's no escaping it. And I mean, if your fundamentals are lacking, then that you're going to have problem problems when you try to use small pieces of the fundamentals. Like you're just, it's gonna, it's going to forever. It's forever going to drag down your work, your lack of your your lack of skills, your lack of ability to handle the fundamentals. Because the thing is that even in the minimalistic style of of like these minimalistic styles of that are used in manga and, and anime, like it's it's still the application of the fundamentals. So if your fundamentals suck, your minimalism will suck. All right. I, I don't make I don't make these rules up. Okay, and then finally, um, you know, when we decide to drop the eyelid. Right, so if we want to drop the eyelid again, I got to get those two poles, and then I got to think. So how much should I? How should I draw this eyelid? Right. So if I draw the eyelid going through the poles, it will be straight like that, and then. Right, it'll be kind of like that. Right. And then, on the other hand, if I wanted to draw the eye, let's say I wanted to draw it about here. So that means that my eyelid has to pass through this point. And this is why I say, do it with little pieces. So it's it's gonna have to come around like that. And oh, look at that! Didn't we see this shape at the beginning of the video? All right, so. So it's like I always say, when you're drawing, like I see a lot of amateur people who love the manga style. They look at it, it's very attractive to them. They don't understand the basics that are going on behind it. They just do symbol, symbol drawing. Symbol drawing for symbol minds. And, uh, and they make something that just looks like an abomination because, because they're, you know, they don't understand why those lines look that way. And then I can draw a bit of a, a cast shadow. So pretty simple. <laughs> like it, it, like it. The result, the final result, is simple. But there's a lot of thought that goes on behind the uh, behind the scenes. So yeah, let's look at this next bit here. Now, there are some impossibilities going on. And so there are some cheats that are being used. They have to be used because otherwise it, it's like we've got a scenario here where um, one person is, yeah, let's just clear my other blank pages. All right, so here's a scenario. Off in the distance, we have one character, and then in the foreground we have so in the background we so we, we have a foreground character, and well, there's a bit of an issue here, and that is that the back of this person is is facing us, and theoretically we should not we should not be able to see. Um, any facial expressions or anything, right? We should just be staring at the back of their head, but that's not interesting. 
that doesn't look very good. So here's where they put in the cheat. They draw her looking, they, they turn her head somewhat to the side. And then of course they do the side mouth thing. And it's, the alternative is just not even seeing a face at all. Right? And they want to show facial expression because the facial expression is, is, is important. It's important to the, to the storytelling. So this is one of the things about cartooning is that cartooning allows us to bend a few rules. And I know there's memes regarding the whole side mouth, side face thing. But, you know, this is the thing about cartooning is that no one is going to look at this cartooning picture of this guy's head and, and say, well, you know, <laughs> about like that doesn't become a meme. That kind of simplification, right? So you, you got to understand, you know, when, um, when artists are bending the rules on purpose. Right? If we were to actually turn this into a whole, like, if we were to render this all out with 3D models and everything, like, yeah, we, it would become immediately apparent to us how things are wrong. But from a narrative standpoint, this works better. So, no end to break the rules. Right? This is an example of, of, of intentionally breaking the rules, and it makes it better as a result. Here's another thing I got for you. Look at that. Look at how he's got his hands in that shape. Now, I know briefcase handles, they generally are only shaped to handle one hand. But to make that pose work, the briefcase handle has been widened. All right? So just understand that if you're going to, you know, just to draw that pose, right, that when you're doing cartooning, these are where the rules are being bent, right? Is it, you know, is it 100% correct as in terms of the rules of reality no it's not it doesn't even matter no one it like that stuff does not matter until i point it out right and you shouldn't be trying like if you're if you're just reading a comic just read the fucking comic don't don't try to nitpick the the, the, the living craft out of it just enjoy the damn show right like there's a difference between being an artist who's trying to do everything textbook correct and being an entertainer and this is art done for entertainment once again, here, we're, we're, we've got some weird things going on with perspective, but from a narrative standpoint, works great. Works great, you know? We get to see him doing the, the Dogiza uh, pose, which is like where you, this is like the, the most sincerest form of apology any Japanese person can do, that, that pose. Um, and then, you know, like we look at this angle, you know, we're seeing her as if she's, like, if we were to just cover up, if we don't look at this part here, if I black this out, right? For all we know, we don't know that we're looking down at the floor. This doesn't even feel like a downward shot, right? But it still works, right? We don't show her bending down. It just would feel strange. Professional artists, okay? Professional artists do all the, all the time. And... I'm just looking for other things that I could point out that I haven't already pointed out. I really like the way that hand's drawn. It's really cute. I like um, when you look at her sweater with the way the lines are being drawn. Like... Um, still shows form pretty well. Oh, there's no lines on, on the cardigan here. Now, one of two things is happening. Either the artist decided it's kind of lazy, or maybe it would have actually distracted when we have that flooring. Like, if I draw those back in, whoops, and I'll try and I'm trying not to like out, you know, upstage. I feel like what happens is if I draw those lines in, she starts to blend in with the background a lot more. So it could be unintentional or it could have been intentional, but I think that um, from a glance, this still reads better. 
especially because of the way that I see the, the ground coming up there. But, you know, just little things like this sometimes, you know, they slip. Yeah. Anyway, um, I hope that that kind of... It's funny. It's like, I, I know I just talked about hair and eyes. I would have loved to have talked about, talk about more things in this, but um, it's not really necessary, right? It's just a lot of it. I mean, a lot of it is just like outside of drawing the face. Like if we look at that, the way that hand is drawn and we look at the way like this clothing is drawn, it's pretty realistic. Right, like that, that suit, like the way the, the suit stitch, like it's fairly, fairly realistic. You know, these parts here, fairly realistically done. So most of the reason why I focus on the hair and the eyes and the face and that kind of thing is because those things are, um, they're simplified. And so people tend to take it very, um, you know, people take a lackadaisical, a lackadaisical approach on the faces and they think that, you know, Oh, and anime is easy to draw because the faces are simplified. So, but but when you look at the rest of the body, the rest of the body, like all these other details, these are fairly realistically drawn, right? That's fairly realistically done. Like that's that's some pretty good cloth drawing. So, you only get to simplify the face and maybe the hair, and then occasionally there are some simplified drawings like this. Right? Why not draw a realistic, a more realistic drawing here? Well, again, it's not as expressive. Sometimes the cartoony, this this little cute cartoony drawing is is more expressive, and it's kind of nice as a contrast between you know this panel, you know these two panels are more realistically done, but this you know they this this drawing, the simplified drawing, has been bookended by two more realistic ones. So it's not like you know it's kind of interesting if we look through this right we have something that's real 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 and then we're going to simplification and now it's like really simplified and it's simplified and it's simplified and then it's we're switching now it's becoming more realistic and then this part here is more realistic and it works better some some of the panels work better when they're realistic Right. It seems that that you know this pose is be this shot's better simplified. Right. And and I'm not, I'm not even like the other thing is that I guess when you have two characters within a small panel like that, it helps to simplify those two. Whereas if you get one character that gets to dominate a panel, then you can be more realistic. And yet we have here a panel where the character has this character here is dominating this panel but is drawn in a very simplified fashion right. why simplify that well for one thing when you simplify um, a person it gives you the it almost it gives you the, the audience's permission to draw a cartoony face like his face is practically an emoji at this point and it makes it's more um, it's more expressive again so knowing when you're showing an exaggerated expression versus when you're showing. And again, it's like, but then again, this face here is, is this kind of a simplified emoji in a sense. That, that face, but it's still drawn more realistically. And, and this is why, you know, it's kind of hard to come up with hard and fast rules. Like as you're drawing, you just have to, you got to go with the flow and you got to go with what you what you know what you think feels right. right look how how simplified his face is and compared to his clothing right so this is why i don't like to give people hard and fast rules i just say you've got to read a lot of manga and you have to just you'll eventually get it I gotta say that whenever you're trying to draw someone, like you're trying to approach something seriously, then you draw more realistic faces. But um, when you're trying to go for something that's lighthearted, then you draw simplified. But yeah, I mean, let's 
I guess what I'll do is, um, yeah, you know, we find other comics which are. I'll try and find other comics which are, you know, really well drawn and they're out in the public domain, meaning they've just been released like on like Twitter or something like that. The whole thing's out there, then I'll I'll analyze it. Um, I don't want to, you know, run afoul of, of stepping on the author if they're trying to, you know, put their stuff behind a paywall. So, okay, I'll talk to you all later. <laughs>